video. Today I'm riding in another location. It's uh, opposite from the one that I'm normally riding. It's called the airport road. There is a track along the, the road that leads to the airport. Uh, I've been riding here uh, before. So I like the track. It's uh, very small. I'm gonna make some footage from the front of the bike. I have a new camera installed today. But in today's video, I'm gonna talk about the things that nobody tells you about cycling. So let's start the ride and dive into details. I don't know how well it's gonna be the sound because uh, the camera is on the front of the, the bike and I'm a little bit far away from it. But let's give it a try. So this is the track that I'm riding today. It's a bit narrow, but I like it. It's quite long. Uh, it has about 80 or 84 kilometers. It's uh, not uninterrupted by, by cars, so that doesn't make it the longest in the world. It's the other one, the Olympic track, the, the longest one in the world because there is no cars interfering with the track. For this one we have to be a little bit more careful when riding here and also there is a lot of people walking here. So the reason I wanted to do this video is to talk a little bit uh, to everyone who is new into cycling and what to expect from cycling. Cycling is a very expensive sport first. When I started cycling I bought my first bicycle in the pandemic uh, around two years and a half ago and it was entry-level bike my first road bike was like uh, 1200 1300 dollars and I thought I'm a little bit fit I go to the gym I can uh, I can ride like with uh, with top guys I can uh, I can keep up with them but no that's not uh, how it is uh, another thing is that Cycling is very demanding. When I started riding first, I was riding my, uh, my entry-level bike and I thought this is gonna be easy. I can keep up with, with people who, who are riding for a while because I go a little bit to the gym. So I said, okay, I can do it. No, my first rides with, uh, with the groups, I thought I'm gonna die. Honestly, it was so hard to, to keep up in the group. It's, it was so hard to ride, like wheel to wheel, how we call it. Uh, always stressed with my hands on the brakes, anticipating things. So it, it is not easy at all. Until you get used to it, you need a lot of training. And nobody told me that I had to, to adapt. Okay, cycling community, it's a very beautiful community. Everyone is very supportive and uh, informative they give you all kind of information that you need such a beautiful sunset tonight i'm gonna try to catch some nice views from the other side where the sun is gonna show a little bit I find myself sometimes telling Telling myself like I'm gonna do an easy ride today, like recovery ride, and then five minutes into the ride I start pushing and pushing and pushing. And I was talking to my friend like I, I'm feeling now it's very hard to to ride very easy. But of course, when you start cycling, it's uh, all about building your base, uh, doing gym at least three to four times a week strength training doing easy rides of course hard rides as well uh, at the beginning i was riding just easy 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 also cycling it's a very i i would say dangerous sport if you don't ride it in a designated track like here in qatar we are so lucky to have this designated cycling track which uh, is 33 kilometers long, one way, so 66k. We have this one that I'm riding today, which is pretty safe. There is about two, three lanes which are interrupted by cars, but if you drive, if you ride slow 
and you are careful, there is nothing to worry about. Uh, but if you ride on the road, there is so many accidents happening. People are on their phone while driving and they don't notice the, the riders or the riders, they ride very reckless and uh, yeah. The truth is that we cyclists, we think sometimes that we, we own the road, which is not the case because cars are stronger than us and we have to, to be very careful. Always put lights on your bike when you ride in the street, especially at night. If you can and you like, wear a vest, reflectorizant vest, which uh, will allow the, the dr drivers of the cars to, to see you better. Always wear a helmet, never go on a road bike without a helmet or a mountain bike, because the asphalt, it's much, much harder than your head, and uh, you have only one head. You break it, it's irreplaceable. Um, wear gloves if you like to protect your fingers the track here is a bit wider where I when I started it was a bit narrower but I'm uh, about eight kilometers in into the ride and it uh, it went a little bit wider it's beautiful over here not much people in the evenings and uh, normal days Today is Saturday, I guess everyone uh, rode in the morning because everyone has uh, work tomorrow. Here in Qatar the, the weekend is over Friday and Saturday. So Sunday is the first day of work. One more thing I would talk about is the training hours that goes into cycling. I didn't know that it is so difficult to build up the stamina for, for cycling that it takes several months to be able to ride at a designated average speed or like um, some average watts that very strong people are riding like when I when I started riding I was so happy to, to be able to ride uh, 40 kilometers or 30 kilometers at an average of 29 30 when I broke the barrier of 30 average speed I was so happy now uh, with with so many months of training and improving myself, it's so easy to ride at 34, 35, or 50, 60 kilometers, sometimes 100 kilometers at 35 kilometer average. It is easier to, to keep it up. So yeah, it goes. You need to ride at least 200 to 250 kilometers weekly. That means in hours, about eight to 10 hours of riding to to get to a level where you can say it's easy to do a 32, 33 kilometer per hour uh, average speed or a 200, 210 watts average in a ride. So yeah, the amount of training that goes into, into riding, it's, uh, it's pretty insane. I'm not talking about pro level. Pro level, they ride 30, to 35 hours average weekly compared to an amateur cyclist like me who rides 8 to 10 hours weekly the difference is the difference is huge i'm not going to talk about watts and watts per kilo because there the the difference is insane like we cannot even compare an amateur cyclist with a pro level cyclist the information that you get when you start cycling People will start giving you all kinds of information. So absorb everything you can, take the good information, use it, uh, double check it as well, go on YouTube, go on uh, in, in the internet, on Instagram. Some people will say that uh, we, we here in Qatar, we live in a flat country, so it's easy for us to ride at very high average speeds. Well, I would disagree with that because we have the heat and we have the winds here. Especially in, uh, in winter, when the weather is good, there is such big winds. Like sometimes we, we head out for a ride on a regular Friday ride and we have 35 to 40 kilometers per hour headwind. And average speed is about 27, 28 maximum if we push all together. 
So they would say, okay, but on the way back you have the tailwind. Yes, but on the way going we have to work to, to reach there, to be able to ride with a tailwind. Also very important factor in cycling is hydration. Hydration and nutrition. Okay, uh, nutrition on the bike and nutrition when you're off the bike. Both of them you have to take care. Uh, nobody told me when I started cycling that you have to take gels with you, energy gels. You have to put uh, like energy drinks inside your water. I was just going with water and I was dying out very, very fast. So you have to put electrolytes, uh, you have to put amino acids, BCA, whatever you like. Uh, me, I like riding one bottle half mixed with water, with uh, electrolytes, one bottle half water, half uh, BCAA. That gives me energy to, to go through the ride. Also, you have to eat every, every 40 to 60 minutes, you have to get carbs in, at least 20 to 30 grams of carbs. So you can get a banana with you, you can get an energy bar, anything, but do not ride on empty stomach more than 60 minutes, it's not indicated. After that, you need to get your uh, nutrition in. Once you get uh, more tools on your bike, like a power meter, you, it can be a crank, it can be pedals, you're going to start to want more and more. You're going to start to ride at a higher watts to improve your performance. You're going to start to, to ignore a little bit the, the slow rides because you don't want to show that you are riding at a slow watts. Sometimes I do that mistake as well, I know. But like today I'm riding, yesterday I had a very, very hard ride. So today I'm riding at, uh, I think 120, 130 watts average, which is uh, very low, but it's very good as a recovery. So take your time, don't rush into things, build up your performance, start with slow rides and uh, build it uh, slowly, slowly. Like look at today weather. It is hot and it is windy and it's a side wind here on this track which doesn't make it very very difficult but the heat makes it very difficult when I started it was about 42 degrees at 6 p.m. now it's about 38 it's going a little bit down but still it's very very hot so that elevates your heart rate uh, it makes you very thirsty it makes you fatigue very very easy so yeah, in Europe or other side of the world where the weather is nice in, uh, in summer, okay, they have climbing, which is pretty difficult. I remember last year when I went to Romania in Europe and I uh, climbed. First time I thought something is wrong with the bike. So yeah, I was saying when I first climbed last year for the first time, I thought something is wrong with the bike. I was going 9, 10, 12 kilometers per hour uphill. I stopped, I spin the wheel. I thought the brakes are touching. It was nothing wrong with it. That was the climbing because coming from a flat, flat country to a very hilly country, I was, I was devastated. Like it took me, it took me so long to, like one week to get, to get used to those steep climbs and very low average speed same with the with the wind you work hard to go through the wind but you enjoy the tailwind it's the same with the with the climbs you work hard to, to climb but you enjoy the downhill and this is the beauty of cycling it's hard and it's rewarding at the same time so if you want to enjoy it you have to work hard and have that feeling of enjoyment after. That is what makes cycling so addictive. I was talking to some people and I asked them like, it's painful, why do you enjoy it? Because you have that 
sentiment of excitement of achievement after the the ride that you you feel you did something which is very rewarding for for the brain and that's why people enjoy it because cycling is painful it can be extremely extremely painful in some cases i made a quick stop and i want to talk about uh, being nice to everyone when you ride some people are stronger some people are weaker it's okay just know the people you are riding with be nice to them another point that i want to talk about is uh, maintenance for your bike me i'm very fortunate to have my good friend who always looked after my bike who always made me all the upgrades i installed everything on my bike so i don't have any issue with it but uh, it is very important to know how to wash your bike how to lube your chain how to degrease the cassette how to degrease the chain how to change a tire which most people don't really know how to do that sorry it's a bit dark here the lights went off so yeah unless you are riding tubeless which don't save you as well from a from a flat tire you can have a flat tire with tubeless it never happened to me thanks god and i hope it will never happen but it can happen and if someone else carries a tube you can uh, put the tube in and keep riding if no just call a taxi or an uber and that's your only save but yeah you have to to learn how to maintain your bike how to take care of it if you don't want to take it for a for a service to to look after it all the time imagine you you have to take your bike for a wash all the time or you have to take your bike to to change a tire that is very ridiculous for a for a cyclist i would just say this that the best feeling you have with cycling is that the community is amazing on social media on instagram on youtube you can get motivated very easy you can have people around you to motivate you always and uh, the friends you make cycling i made very good friends like very very close friends i have now with cycling and we we keep in touch every day it's a, it's a beautiful community so if you want to get into cycling i would advise you to to go for it but expect some some hidden things which you are going to discover on the way another thing that i didn't know about it was intervals i was just riding normal rides at the begin and uh, i was not seeing any improvement i was always tired my legs were always tired until i find out about the intervals intervals they bring your heart rate levels down because you train at a very high heart rate about 170 180 uh, zone 4 normally zone zone 4 zone 5 and then you rest so it goes for you go 1 minute full gas 2 minutes recovery or you can go 2 minutes full gas 1 minute recovery there is uh, there is a lot of uh, intervals that you can uh, you can find out Garmin has as well intervals you can get a um, indoor trainer and start doing intervals those are going to be your foundation in getting better at cycling along with strength training so there is two things which are very important strength training and intervals this is the foundation in getting better mobility and strength training nobody told me when i started cycling that the most important in order to get better in cycling is to improve your mobility flexibility and mobility I find out I found out when I went first for the bike fit which is as well a very important uh, thing that uh, everyone should get when they start uh, doing cycling at an amateur level um, the guy put me to, to touch my 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 toes with uh, my fingers and I couldn't without bending the knees 
So that was the moment when I find out that my mobility was absolutely zero. So in order to get better, to not have the neck pain, shoulders pain, in, uh, in the bike you have to work a lot on uh, mobility. Yoga is very good. Uh, there's a lot of mobility exercises uh, on YouTube that you can find. Have you ever heard about the term bonking? It is the term used when you clearly want to die while riding. You feel you are dying and actually that's happening. It is a very dangerous feeling uh, you are getting because your body is depleted of, um, of energy, uh, which is uh, glycogen, the primary source of uh, energy, and starts breaking down muscles as a fuel. That occurs on very high training when you're pushing yourself too much and you run out of energy and you are not replacing that energy. Uh, what do you do in that, uh, in that um, moment? Normally you carry um, a protein bar with you, an energy gel, you take a break and you, and you eat that. Did I ever bonk? Oh yes, and I bonked so hard that I walked next to the bike for 100 or 200 meters because I couldn't anymore. I was running on water at the beginning, um, riding on water at the beginning and um, I was not having any energy gel with me, any energy bar, nothing. And I was doing a 60 kilometers uh, ride and I ran out of energy. And I felt so bad that I almost throw up. That's the feeling that you are, feel, uh, that you are having. Um, you, you feel you want to faint, you want to throw up. Uh, whatever you do, you are not recovering your energy. So. That term is called bonking. It is a very dangerous feeling when you get it. If you are in a group ride, you should uh, slow down, even if you get dropped from the group, because uh, in a group ride, you, you may faint and uh, fall into other riders and cause a big uh, crash. So just inform the, the others, get dropped, it's fine, take a break, get your energy levels restored, eat something if you have with you, if no, call a taxi, um, but it, it is not safe to ride like that. Thank you, here I am in Pedder Bikes. Airport Road. I finish my ride. It's a new shop open. They are selling BMC bikes. I just visited the shop and I had a, a Gatorade because I was uh, out of water and electrolytes. Um, anyway, it was very hot. I forgot to put ice and I was running uh, on hot water. It was not very pleasing. Here I'm ending the, the video. See you next time on another video. Uh, if I missed any tips or hidden things that uh, nobody told you when you started cycling, let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe, for better videos in the coming weeks.